type my there's so so much of the social issue social issue there so uh, when I started doing uh, testing and development I, I tried it on myself uh, before I uh, had my team go through that and um, it was really hard doing it by myself because nobody else was uh, thinking about doing it uh, thinking about how uh, he how someone else should run my tests for example so the whole notion of uh, a team work around unit tests or, or TDD was foreign. So what do you think can make the jump from uh, the single developer who starting TDD knows that it's okay and then wants to convince the entire company to go that way? So obviously this is a tough one to do. Uh, you get one guy and, and the guy is convinced, okay, I'm doing test-driven development. And the rest of the programmers write him off as some kind of uh, fad follower, extremist of some kind. And uh, this guy feels fairly isolated and uncomfortable and you know, maybe he'll even stop doing test-driven development so that he can rejoin the community of uh, substandard developers. But what, what might happen is that he continues to follow, he or she continues to follow this discipline and begins to perform better than the others. Now, this could be good, this could be bad. I mean, the others might decide to take him out and back and bury him <laughs> because he's performing better. Um, on the other hand, if, if he is demonstrating clear pride in his workmanship, if he is clearly doing better than the others, if the others can see a, a difference, then one or two of the others will very likely decide to try this out too. And then you have the snowball effect. Uh, and you know, the poor guy who starts the snowball has to weather a pretty nasty storm and he has to be persistent and it might take months and maybe years. But if you continue your practices and if you continue to do very well, others will follow. Once the snowball happens, uh, it happens very rapidly. So I worked at a company long, long ago where, where I was the person who brought the C language into the company. We had all been assembly language programmers. Okay. And I was the guy who decided that C was a good idea. And, and I wrote C code and everybody else said, well, you know, that sounds like an interesting idea, but it's too slow because it's a compiled language. Can you imagine somebody saying C is slow? But that was the idea, right? Uh, it's too slow, and, and it doesn't use memory efficiently, and besides, you know, we're assembly language programmers, we can't take that risk. And it was, it was literally three years, yeah, I was the guy writing C, and everybody else was staying with assembly language. Occasionally I would do a, a few projects, and I would get a couple of guys with me, and, and we would write C together, and we'd we produce our code a lot faster and it was a lot better and it got done quicker and and it took a long time for people to notice and then I remember there was this day and it was literally a day when a couple of the managers got together and said you know the C thing is a pretty good idea we should train everybody in the company and they hired a guy to come in to train the whole company how to use C and that was it we were using C the whole company just switched it was, you know, and that took a long time, and it yeah. took patience and some persistence, and that's how it would work with TDD as well. And then probably any good idea, if it proves to be a good idea, that snowball effect will happen. So three years of work, then one day of decision, and everything's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, when you were in Israel a few weeks back, um, by the way, when are you coming back? Uh, I will be back sometime in the summer or fall. Oh, good. Uh, we talked about the Java versus the .NET world. Yes. Whether, uh, um, <laughs> what, it, it was a very interesting discussion because um, uh, my question to you is something that we talked about. Is it Microsoft, in the Microsoft world, in the .NET world, do you see it's Microsoft's duty to, uh, to train developers on unit testing, on, on better tooling? or because in the Java world, it's mostly the community? I, I don't think it's Microsoft's job to train anybody anything. Um, I think Microsoft's job, and I think Microsoft understands their job very well, Microsoft's job is to make money. 
and that's what they're really good at doing, and that's what they will continue to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, does it help Microsoft if they train developers? Maybe it does. Does it help developers if Microsoft trains developers? I'm not so convinced. Okay. Because I'm not so convinced I want a company with a, with a profit motive, which again, there's nothing wrong with a good profit motive, but I'm not sure I want that profit motive being the thing that decides what developers learn. Uh, so I'm much more likely to trust the community of developers to figure out what developers ought to learn and then to fit that into the Microsoft world. Yeah, but the, these are different communities, at least it seems like that. The, the, the they are different communities the indeed, yes. Yeah. yes. So Although lately there's been an interface between them and, and that's something I've been happy to see. Um, I can remember Oh, even 10 years ago, going to um, uh, shops where Microsoft was, was uh, very influential and people were doing DCOM and COM and, and uh, they were counting on the next great technology to come from, from uh, Microsoft. Uh, I remember going to one group and they were just rubbing their hands and going, when the Chicago technology yeah. comes. Uh, you may remember what the Chicago technology I was, there. was. <laughs> but they were just, yeah, the, techno the Chicago technology will come and the world will change. Um, there has been this kind of culty, inward looking thing that the Microsoft community has engendered as though Microsoft were the sole source of innovation and the sole reason that software developers had to live. Uh, and I think that has pretty well broken down at this point. There's still a, a high allegiance to the Microsoft influence, but the Microsoft community has begun to look around at what other folks have been doing and have begun to take in these ideas. I was very happy in, in uh, 2002, 2003, when Microsoft hired Ward Cunningham and hired Jim Newkirk and hired people who were clearly outside the, the Microsoft domain to help them broaden the message out to other folks, mm -hmm. other communities. Mm -hmm.